This is the Manfrotto NitroTech 612 fluid head. So this fluid head is part of Manfrotto's newer NitroTech lineup of tripod heads, and it has a very unique feature that I really don't know of any other companies that are doing. Now I'm gonna get into that really unique feature in just a minute, but first of all, I just wanna go over some of the specs of this tripod head and some of the things that it can do. Now right off the bat, I wanna say this is not a review of this tripod head. This is more of just a showcase to show you this really unique feature, as well as just talk about some of the specs of it. I've been using this tripod head for over a week now, and it's been absolutely amazing, very smooth, just everything about it has been awesome. So I just want to do a little showcase and just kind of talk about the really interesting, unique thing that this tripod head has. So if you're just a camera gear nerd like me and like seeing specs and learning about new things, hopefully you'll find this video interesting. But again, this is not a review of this tripod head, more of just a showcase. All right, now one final thing before I get into this video, I promise Manfrotto did send me this tripod head as well as some tripod legs. So I did not pay for this with my own money. However, I was not told to say anything specific about it. So now without further ado, Let's talk about some of the specs of this tripod head. So first of all, you can see this is a pretty heavy duty tripod head and it's meant for bigger camera rigs. So personally, I'm gonna use this with my Ari Alexa, my Red One MX, and like a fully built out A7S III camera rig for use with all sorts of video productions from you know my YouTube videos to music videos and everything in between. So that is what I'm gonna use this for and that's kind of what it's meant for, heavier duty camera rigs. And it actually can't even really support lighter camera rigs. So the counterbalance weight load is between 8.8 .8 and 26.4 pounds. So really any camera rig that's under 8.8 pounds is not gonna work the best with this because it has a heavier duty counterbalance system in it. So if you have a super light camera, like for example, if I just threw on my Canon M50 onto this, which this with a cage and a lens and an adapter still probably weighs less than a couple pounds. If I put this on this tripod head, the counterbalance system wouldn't really work. And if you tilted it back, it would always just lean back forward to center it. So you really need somewhat of a heavier camera rig to use this. Now Manfrotto does make tripod heads that are pretty much the same as this. However, they have a lower capacity so that you can use smaller camera rigs with it. But either way, like I said, weight range for the counterbalance, which is kind of, you know, what you buy a fluid head for is having the perfectly smooth movement and having that counterbalance. You can just tilt it down or wherever you need to let go. And it's gonna stay right there without having to lock it in place like you'd usually have to with non-fluid head tripod heads. And it also won't just fling back up you know, level as soon as you let go. It's pretty much gonna stay exactly where you put it, which is very important for high-end video productions and something that a lot of high-end video heads like this will have. However, if you're not worried about the counterbalance as much and you just want something that will support your camera rig, this will still support a camera rig up to 39.7 pounds. However, the counterbalance won't work and if you let go of it and it's not perfectly centered or if you tilt it a little bit and then let go, it's just gonna, you know, pretty much just fall forward or backward. So you're gonna pretty much have to always lock it in place so it won't move. However, it still will support those heavy of camera rigs. It's just not within the working load for the counterbalance system on this. And a few other specs, this weighs five pounds, so it's a pretty hefty tripod head. It's pretty much fully made out of metal, so it's built like a tank, but it is hefty for, you know, carrying around and stuff. It's not gonna be a tiny little light ball head. Now it does have a bubble level and it's actually illuminated as well with an LED. So if it's really dark outside or if you're just in a dark location filming, you can just click on the LED light and it has a replaceable battery. This is one of those little button cell batteries and you'll be able to see the bubble level no matter what conditions you're in, which is super nice. A nice little feature that doesn't add a whole lot to it. It's nothing that would be a deal breaker for anybody, but it's just kind of those things that you see on a higher end piece of gear like this. And you just know that they took their time to really think about the little things like that. Like just adding a little LED light to this. Most people wouldn't think about it, but if you're in a dark scenario, it's definitely going to be helpful for you. And also this uses Manfrotto 504 quick release plates. They're pretty common. Manfrotto plates and and then Arco Swiss are pretty much the two most common types of quick release plates. So it's nice to see a standard quick release plate on this. But of course, Manfrotto did pretty much engineer that quick release plate. So it makes sense that they would use that. But just another thing to mention, it does use the Manfrotto standard plates. Also on the bottom, it's a flat base and it has a 3 8 thread. We can get, of course, a quarter inch adapter in this if you need to, but standard 3 8 thread on the bottom. And like I already mentioned, the pan and tilt is very, very smooth with this. Of course, you have adjustable loads on it so you can make it tighter. So, you know, it's harder to move up and down and left and right, or you can loosen it up to make it a lot easier. Right now I have the pan loosened all the way up. And as you can see, it can just spin all the way around there. When there's more weight on it, you can just instantly tell how good the bearings are because it just spins for a long time. Like I said, when there's more weight on it, 
works better. So very good, very smooth, very good bearings. The whole thing is just built like a tank and you can tell, you know, with every step of the way, they really thought about every single design and everything they added to this to make sure it worked best. So even this right here, this is the counterbalance system. So this is pretty much what judges how springy it is to hold it in place if you tilt your camera, you know, forward or backward. And so this is that right here. You spin this to pretty much loosen or tighten that up. However, some cameras are going to be really wide and they could block this a little bit so it's hard to reach. So Manfrotto actually added this where you can pull this out and it's going to add just some extra length to that so you can kind of get it out of the way of your camera to spin it and then you can just pop it back in place, you know, back in when you're done with this. So just all those little features really add up to make this feel like just such a well-built system. Now, last thing to mention before we get into this really unique feature on this is actually this right here. So of course it comes with this arm right here for panning and tilting and everything. You can put it on either the right side or the left side. However, this is a very long arm here. So you can see when I put it on this tripod head, it makes it so much longer, which of course is good at getting really smooth pans and tilts. The longer it is, the smoother your movement's gonna be. However, you can't change the length of this at all. So it's always gonna be just sticking out that much no matter where your tripod is. So if you're in a tight space, you know, you need to pretty much just take this off and then you don't have a handle at all. And something that I wish they did with this is something that iFootage did great with their Komodo K7, which I'm actually using with my camera right now. But this is the handle for the Komodo K7 fluid head from iFootage. First of all, this one's a lot shorter, which right off the bat isn't a good or a bad thing. You might want it longer, you might want it shorter. However, this one, you can actually rotate right here and you can telescope it in and out. So it's a telescoping handle for the tripod. You can shorten it out a lot, you know, if you're in a tight space, if you don't want that super long handle on it. And at that point, it's a decent amount shorter than the Manfrotto one. You can see right there, a little bit shorter. However, if you want it to be nice and long, you can do that, tighten it down there, and now it's actually longer than the Manfrotto one. So I really wish Manfrotto had that telescoping handle on there. There's been multiple times where this has been so long that it just would have hit something or gotten in the way of wherever I needed to put the tripod. So I just took it off and had the tripod head without the handle on it, which of course you can do, and it's not really that big of an issue, but just something to mention, I really wish Manfrotto did this style of design with a telescoping handle. But that's pretty much some of the specs, some of my thoughts on it. Now let's get into the really interesting feature of this. So the name of this tripod head pretty much gives away what it is. This is called the NitroTech 612. You can see NitroTech writing right in here on this little mechanism on the inside of it. And so NitroTech actually stands for nitrogen. So this fluid head actually has a compressed nitrogen cylinder built inside of it. And that is pretty much what controls the counterbalance mechanism on this tripod head. And like I said, it's a very unique system. I believe most fluid heads with their counterbalance balance systems have pretty much just a spring mechanism for their counterbalance load system. So a lot of them will be stepped essentially. So my iFootage one that I actually have my camera on right now, it's a four step counterbalance system. So there's four different settings for how strong the counterbalance is. And other manufacturers will have different amount of steps, you know, just pretty much it's just you click it one, two, three, four, however many steps there are to dial in how heavy your camera is, dial in your load, dial in your counterbalance system to make it essentially match up perfectly so that, you know, it's not not gonna just fall forward or backward, but also it's not just gonna spring back up into place when you let go of it. You know, essentially if everything's dialed in perfect, you're gonna tilt it down and it's gonna stay exactly where you left it when you let go. You know, of course I already mentioned that is pretty much what a counterbalance system is on these fluid heads. However, something I've noticed, especially on my iFootage one, sometimes depending on what camera I'm using, if I use something like strength number two on that counterbalance dial, it might not be strong enough. And if I let go, my camera will just tilt forward or backward or however I have it. However, if I put it to number three, it'll be too strong and when I let go it'll just fling back up to being level but you can't go anywhere in between two and three it's just one two three and four and that's one of the issues with standard counterbalance mechanisms is it's pretty much just in steps like in certain increments not a continuous increment however with this it's literally just a compressed nitrogen cylinder in here and so essentially what happens when you tighten and loosen this counterbalance knob it's going to compress and decompress that nitrogen cylinder to essentially just continuously change the strength it takes to push it down. Because when you tilt this tripod head forward and backward, it's pushing down on the nitrogen cylinder. So when the cylinder is compressed more, of course, it's going to be harder to push it even more in there. And it's going to strengthen that counterbalance system. And the same goes for the opposite. You know, when it's loosened up more, it's going to be easier to compress it, easier for it to just move forward and backward without going back into place. But since this is just a compressed cylinder that can essentially go anywhere in between, you know, the two hard stops on both ends, there's not certain increments or steps that you do with it. It's just 
just a continuous turn. You can turn just little by little to perfectly dial in your camera weight and your load to make this a perfectly balanced system. I don't know if I explained that well at all, but I really hope I did. Hope you kind of understand what I'm talking about here. That is the really unique feature of this Manfrotto technology with the nitrogen cylinder. And that's what separates these Nitrotech tripod heads from just other standard fluid heads. It really adds to that just quality feeling to these. And it really shows that Manfrotto went out of their way to design this system, you know, to make better quality products. So that is it. That's my rant about this really unique tripod head. Like I said, it's not a review or anything. There are reviews out there if you want to check them out. But I just really wanted to showcase this, talk some technical stuff with you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope I explained that well. And that wraps this up. If you enjoyed it, go down hit the like button and subscribe. It would really help me out. And also check out my other channel. I have a bunch of videos on there that might interest you as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.